Welcome to CES for the PC Gamer. This is your guide to all the gizmos and gadgets a discerning enthusiast might want from this year's trade show. From keyboards to mice to whatever this is, we tackle the tech that'll tickle your fancy in 2012. First up is a trio of Razer products. Over at the Razer booth, I'm joined by Simone, who's gonna talk us through three new Razer products, branded Old Republic. Thank you for joining us. Hey, hi guys, glad to be here. This is actually the Switchblade UI. Um, it's also found in our Razer Blade. And what it does is that it acts as a secondary screen. So while you're playing the game, instead of having to alt tab out, you can actually access the browser and uh, or YouTube. There's a gaming mode where you can disable your alternate, fun uh, your alternate, your alternate F4 keys a macro recording mode, a numpad mode, as well as a trackpad mode. So you can use it as a secondary mouse. So do these functions only work while you're playing the Old Republic, or is this across all programs? Um, it's across all boards. Um, eventually, there'll be more apps that will be developed. Like, uh, for example, in the plans, uh, what you can do is, like, while playing the Old Republic game, you can maybe have a mini-map that shows your in-game map, so you don't have to have a map overlay when you're playing it. So now uh, we've got a mouse and mouse pad on display. Correct. Um, the mouse is basically a reskin of our award-winning uh, Razer Naga Epic. So it has the 12 thumb buttons on the side. Um, the mouse also has either wired or wireless um, capabilities, up to you. So it comes with a dock, which just sits on like that, and then you can take it off and it's wireless. The headset, the mouse mat, and the mouse also comes with interchangeable faceplates. So it depends on whether you prefer Republic or Empire, you just swap it around. And um, finally, we have the headset, which has 5.1 um, audio, as well as a built-in mic. So when are these three products going to be available? OK, um, the headset, the mouse mat, and the um, mouse are available on our website, the Razer Zone store, while the keyboard will be shipping in quarter one, 2012. Do you, can you tell us how much these will uh, set gamers back? Sure. Um, the keyboard is um, priced at 249 The mouse is at 139 The mouse mat is 49 and the headset is 129 Next, we catch up with Alex from Mad Cats and see the Cyborg MMO7. Looks like a rat, but it's not the rat. Now, as we know, the uh, the Cyborg rat, we actually it's the best reviewed mouse on the market. It's actually a Guinness World Record winner as the world's most customizable mouse. It's been a huge success for us, the Cyborg rat. But what we wanted to do is is do something specifically for an MMO audience, a love letter, if you will, to MMO gamers out there. So this is the brand new breed. We call this the MMO7, and of course, it's based on the rat architecture, but it adds uh, a lot of really cool things to the mix as well. So um, the first thing that you're going to notice is an amazing amount of buttons. We've actually really upped the button count here. You've got no less than uh, 13 buttons on the actual face of the mouse itself. But check this out. So you've got three selectable cyborg modes, just like you had with the uh, with the original Cyborg Rat 7. But you've now got a shift button. And what that allows me to do is effectively double that from three to six separate modes. So you do the math. You've got six separate modes. You've got 13 buttons on the actual face of the controller. You can now have no less than 78 customizable buttons without having to reach for the keyboard. It's crazy and perfect for an MMO audience. Uh, but that's not all. We've actually got something here called the SD button. So on the original Cyborg Rat 7 and the Rat 9, this was actually the precision aim button where you'd press and hold and it would slow down the cursor movement. If you still want that, you can do that. But the SD button is now a rocker switch. So you've got an additional five action buttons that you can use there just by rocking the switch. So it's, it's pretty incredible too. Now also, we've got a new system on here, something brand new to the MMO7 called Action Lock. Now you can see we've got some LED lighting here. These are the Action Lock buttons. If I press that button, you can see Action Lock is ready to be enabled. I press down my left mouse button and it'll turn blue to show me that Action Lock is running. Now what that allows me to do, if I'm playing an MMO game and I've got to traverse large uh, areas of the landscape, I don't have to hold down the left mouse button anymore. When it's blue, it means the left mouse button is constantly being held down for you. So all I got to do is gently move my mouse forward without the need to, uh, to actually hold down the button. So I can do that on the right hand side or the left hand side. Action lock, which is a brand new feature to the mouse. Uh, as ever, solid metal construction. You've got a removable weight system there, fully adjustable. And it even comes with a customizable, unique World of Warcraft plugin as well. So when you're playing World of Warcraft, you've got a little plugin and enables you to drag and drop spells to the mouse. And uh, you don't have to go through complicated or laborious programming. It's just drag and drop. So it's a pretty incredible product. Is that plugin something that's built into World of Warcraft itself? Yeah, we actually get a, a disc with the driver, so you can just download a driver and it integrates right into World of Warcraft. And you've got a little icon that appears on the screen. You just click it and it opens up like a little spell book for you. You can just drag and drop. Third is, well, a bit excessive. Patrick explains. 
This is the Ampro 1510. Uh, it was originally built to be a workstation. So what we took is we took different components from the office and integrated into one machine. But it actually became quite a, a gaming machine. <laughs> so tell us about the, uh, the the different functions of this contraption. What all can it do? So the upper section will lift to to uh, give room for the uh, user to take place. And once inside, you lower the monitors, and then you can uh, choose the position of the entire machine. It can tilt backwards this way, and you have surround sound, you have a uh, keyboard, I mean, all the different uh, components that you need. So what was your inspiration for the design of this product? Uh, the design itself, the styling, it comes from the uh, Emperor Scorpion, because um, we thought the, the tail of the Scorpion was similar to what we had started to, to design, so that's why we named the, the machine that way. So in addition to its business applications, uh, what sort of uh, gaming applications could this device have? Uh, gaming, uh, at the office we have Flight Simulator on three monitors with that particular machine, but uh, all, all types of gaming, and it, you can also have a PC link to it and an Xbox or, uh, Xbox or uh, PlayStation 3 and switch from one to the other. Yeah, can you, is it possible to like, switch these monitors out or is everything that's built into the station permanent? Uh, you can change the monitors, you can change uh, monitor type, monitor position, monitor uh, sizes, so that's all configurable. Uh, about how much is this going to set gamers back? Uh, the machine retails for 6200 so 6200 and that's without the monitors in the PC. The users will use their own PC on monitors. Fourth up is another Razer product designed by one of the company's partners. We'll have Josh elaborate. Yeah, we're showing the Razer Hydra on Portal 2. So um, here's the controller. Uh, you have the two controllers in the base station, and it's going to use magnetic tracking. So you just plug it right into your machine through USB, and uh, it'll automatically come installed with Portal 2 and our exclusive uh, motion pack, which is new DLC and controls for the game. So I can go ahead and show you that right now. So um, the way the controls work is my right hand controls the camera. I just tilt around in any direction. Um, and you can see it's a, a free floating camera, so I don't have to be walked to the center of the screen. Um, and I'm just going to pick up this cube here. Uh, one thing that's really different is I have one-to-one -one control of all the objects in the game. So if I say reach out, in, left or right, up or down, or do a rotation in any direction, you can see the cube on screen is going to follow my actions really precisely. The actual measurements for that, it's, it's one millimeter of position or one degree of orientation. And we've designed uh, from the ground up all new content, new puzzles that really take advantage of everything the controllers can do. So this level, I'll stretch out uh, this cube into a bridge to cross. And you mentioned this technology is powered by magnets, is that correct? Yeah, that's, that's pretty much right. Basically, there's a low-intensity magnetic field that's being generated by the base station from USB power, and we can use that to measure the absolute position and orientation of these controllers. So it's not totally new technology, but it's the first time it's been in the consumer market. It's the first time it's been used for gaming. So the performance is definitely there, and it's uh, been a really good option, I think, for lots of different kinds of games. All right, well, when and where can folks uh, get their hands on the, uh, on the Hydra? So the Hydra is available now at major retailers. Um, you can also get it directly from uh, Razor Zone, and they're actually now also available from the Sixth Sense website too. So, fifth and final is something no PC gamer should be without. Ken, take it away. First product we wanted to talk about was the Metro Datavac Electric Duster. The de electric duster was created to eliminate the need for canned air. So the reason behind it is tens of thousands of cans going into landfills every day. Uh, the duster has no ozone depleting propellants, no cans going into landfills. The cans don't get ice cold to the touch on an electric duster. Uh, there's no uh, condensation. So you can turn the product upside down, right side up, and there's not shooting condensation into your electronics. Um, and uh, the best part about it is that you never have to buy a can of air again. So uh, cans ranging between five, 10, 15 dollars a can. Uh, this is a one-time purchase. Suggested list is about $70, $80. Plugs into your household current, and um, it comes with a bunch of accessories, little blower nozzles that... Uh, little widgets and knobs for uh, reaching those, those hard to reach places. It became very popular in Las Vegas this week because, you know, the price on the street <laughs> is a lot, lot, lot more than this, so... We get into portable vacuum blowers. Uh, this is the Datavac Pro series. Same power as the electric duster, except you can, only, you can use it both as a vacuum 
as well as a blower. So it has 500 watts of power, 4.0 amps, 120 volts. And then if you want to use it as a blower, you can just stick the uh, hose on the back end of the machine and uh, blow out your electronics, computers, cameras. Um, so, so you're saying it, it blows as well as sucks? Is that, is that exactly what it is? In the Vegas terminology, it's... It's, it's within the spirit of the spirit of the season absolutely, here. Absolutely, absolutely. So you've got, and this one also, it's got all the attachments and gizmos that we saw on the. Accessories, a little micro cleaning toolkit, um, crevice tool, dusting brush, air pin pointer. All these products made in the U.S. So if it's late at night, I've got a little bit of Cheeto fingers going on. Yeah. Dust gets down on the keyboard. This is what I'm turning to. Absolutely, absolutely. And not only that, you know, you uh, you'll see the amount of. You see the amount of uh, dust that is going to come out of your system when you're using these products. It's amazing. So are both of these are both of these products available now? Yes, they are. And then how much are they going to set gamers back? Um, well, Datavac Electric Duster retailing about seventy dollars, give or take. Uh, the Datavac Pro Series starting at about eighty dollars retail. All right, Kim. Well, is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap it up? Uh, Metrovac, uh, we're a family-owned company, started in 1939. Manufacturing here in the U.S., three-generation old company, family-owned, and uh, this uh, industry has been great to us. All right, well, congratulations. Thank you so much for chatting with us. Take care. Appreciate it. And with that, our guide comes to a close. Do you think you'll pony up any cash for these peripherals? Let us know in the comments below. Until then, this is Maxwell McGee saying thanks for watching.